Why, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Dogabout333, and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4, the new or last days of Europe as the West Russian Revolutionary Front. Now, in the last video, we... I believe that's when we put Zukov into charge. If not, it's pretty damn close. Uh, we also went ahead and peacefully integrated uh, Vologda and less than peacefully integrated Comey, who taken over St. George. So, we have a pretty solid positioning overall. I'm pretty happy with how it all turned out. Uh, so, there's... Not too much now, other than just kind of keep pushing. I gotta check the focus tree again real quick and sell the resources, right? We'll get into some more sooner rather than later. And then eventually Operation Venus, probably the mechanized men. Actually, I think that's, that and Viaka are the only two we can really partake in after this. And I'd rather take a shot at Viatka first. It looks like they will probably bypass Vyatka. Let's see. They might go after Samara first rather than Gorky, which might work out okay for us, actually. For now, let's go ahead and thank the farmers. Now that our food crisis is over and our fortunes have improved drastically, we can look back at the people who made our windfall possible, the loyal farmers who fled the front armies even at their darkest hours. Their heroic struggle to produce sufficient quantities of food for the military caused a great deal of suffering and sacrifice. Some of the state honor the, their contributions to the communist cause. We will immortalize our farmers with a statue in every city. Expansive amounts of government aid will be given to them to support, to feed themselves and their families, although they are quite aware that no amount of tractors or fodder could ever repay what they have given to the people of the Soviet Union. There we go. So it is quite a good thing I think we're doing. It is Saturday night. Uh, the new update for TNO, asterisk, is coming out tomorrow, so I'm going to try to film all of this in one big old block so I don't have to worry about it. I say asterisks because I think I said this before. It's just going to be uh, them integrating Cold Southern Springs into uh, the main game. But, you know, it is what it is there. New update ought to be nice. Do an offensive line into there. <clears throat> it was a scene that Zukov remembered well. Hundreds of peasants tilling the fields in preparation for this year's seeds, as well as the sunny, bright, and cheerful look of the farmers. A long time ago, before even the Great War, he was raised in such a household. It was a memory that kept him from going through the harshest decades of Russian history. From loss of its pride to the Germans at Brest-Litovsk, the revolutions of 1919, and the ongoing Great Patriotic War, the image of a union drove him forward. One indivisible, inseparable, and invincible. Oi. Marshal, sir, do you have time? The peasant's accent was, uh, something familiar, yet quite faint in Zukov's memory. He felt home there somehow, amongst the copper bodies and calloused hands of the farmers, in the middle of sunlight and patches of melting dew and morning frost. One of his staff members strode forward, intending to show the peasant way. Don't bother the marshal if you any question. That's all right. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. The countryside is beautiful this year round. One can only resist not to get lost in its allure. Uh, your question was? The peasant began his litany of complaints censorious and critical against the previous government's shortcomings. In a dramatic flourish, the marshal whipped out his notes and pencil and started to write, keeping up appearances as usual, though admittedly the people who lived the land might know how to run it best. Thank you, thank you, he said after wasting three pages of notes. I'll make sure that the front takes care of your concerns. Would that be all? The peasant nodded, and the marshal shook his hand. Thank you. Were not for your efforts, we would starve. A successful public performance. There we go. Next, we can go ahead and probably do... Hmm. 
I'm trying to think what we do after this. There's only one we can actually do, and that's Tactical Overview. So, as we consolidate our control more and more over West Rush... Blah, what, what am I? What's wrong with me? West Rush, the military doctrines we developed as a half-stalled warlord state had become increasingly obsolete. We are working on a larger scale now, fiddling quantities of men and equipment that would have been unimaginable just a few years ago. In some ways, we're closer to the front that took on Germany in the 1950s and the front that caged up in Arkhangelsk. It's time to gather our experts and pull out mothballed plans from days past. As we enter the next phase of Russia's liberation, it is vital that we overhaul our tactics to fit the new circumstances that we find ourselves in. The battles coming up will be our largest yet. For the sake of the Soviet people, we must be well prepared. There we go. I'm going to start drinking this um, nutritional shake. I have water next nearby, but I figure something a little healthy. This one's got 9 grams of protein, 27 vitamins and minerals in this bitch. Damn, only 220 calories. Not bad at all. Uh-oh, Poland's fucked. Who would, uh, who would have funk it? Sunsets on the SS. Let's see. Ooh. I'm curious what's going to happen over here. Sverdlovsk is making a bit of a push off the bat, which is interesting. Uh, Tumen also made a bit of a push, so... Who knows? Operation Venus. Let's get working on that. As a front, as the dust of Operation Mercury settles, the front expands southwards. We must locate and prepare for the attacks on our new targets. Of course, what else can come after Mercury other than Venus, the second planet in our solar system from the sun? Our second wave of liberation in West Rush will deal with warlords further away, sitting on the frontier and with no hope of survival. The principal targets the Red Army should be worried about are the four. First, Gorky Fief, the Gorky fiefdom, built on nothing more than a desire to crush the Germans with armored forces. Then there are the Tartar nationalists, mere traitors who have gathered around Alice and his radicalism. Finally, we should not worry about, we should not forget about Vyatka, a regional power led by a czar who worked with the Germans and cares a little about the people, as well as Vyatka's lapdog and Beresniki, controlled by Kazembeck and people following his obscene ideology. They shall all fold to the front. That's what I'm talking about. I don't care too much about this. I can't crack down on a uh, black market, so we'll go ahead and um We don't really need infrastructure up in Narnmar. Not a Oh, bald man Bennett. And then Georgie Jellico. It's quite all right. South African war stalemate. Could be better, could also be worse. Uh, probably uh, not the best for the uh, natives there. Bizarre. Do, do, do. Are they still? I guess we're still fighting Tartarstan. But uh, let's not focus on that for now. Let's w look towards the mechanized men. Accurate information on what happen is happening across the Russian frontier is always difficult to come by. Despite that, you, we could not miss the rumors all coming from the city of Gorky. They spoke of a warlord state not built on ideology or a leader, but the sole desire of the remnants of an army to crush the Germans forever. To do that, they use an armored fleet rumored to be massive. What matters, though, is that these men used to be proud soldiers of the front in the war against the Germans. Perhaps, if we were to approach them, a deal could be reached before we send our best regiments to crush the city of Gorky. I would not want to kill these guys. They sound kind of based. I'm not going to lie. Get some more guns. We're actually, uh... Have a bit of a deficit of, uh, resources right now. Of, uh... Guns at least to upgrade, so let's get working on those as soon as we can. We also got some research. Let's go ahead and uh, 
after working on all that. Uh, Tartar Steer is actually holding out pretty well. Oh, never mind. Means oath, loyalty, the final warning. Remind me later about the phone update. I don't care. And I guess we wait and see. <clears throat> the Marshal of Front stared at the map. Specifically, he was looking at the black blotch, blotch on it, like a tumor growing out of Muscovian Fields Gray in Eastern Rear. The headquarters were silent tonight, and only he was up. Zukov had predicted that Gorky would decline to join the Front. They found out the front so gre they found the front so agreeable the first time they wouldn't have left. Sipping a, a coffee, he saw the troops position positions of his and his enemies. Knowing one's adversary was, after all, the sure way to victory. He placed the cup down. Only one thing bothered him. Gorky was a site for the pre-West Russian War tank factory, and out there in the fields, the front would face its equal. He thumbed through a pile, filled to the brim with. Reports of troop readiness, equipment levels, as well as morale. Everything looked to be in place for the front's triumph, so long as no one attacked him from the rear. Gorky's supply of tanks may seem enormous, but a city alone cannot sustain the needs for such a tank army. He placed his index finger, finger on the lines that would penetrate the tank bandit's territory. The marshal was, above all, a veteran of two finished wars, and one that was still burned into his mind. He could imagine the difficulty. Tanks were mighty behemoths of the field. Without support or special equipment, taking them down would be very challenging. Zukov would not be a marshal for long, however, if he did not trust in his soldiers' morale and skill. The decades where warlords would rule the old Union was coming to an end, and if Gorky would stand against the will of the ages, they were welcome to be granted dust. Averin has left us no choice after all. Well, it seems it is time to punish the pirates. R. The bandits residing in Gorky, while they may use tanks instead of rifles and grenades, are still, in their core, bandits. They roam the area merely for personal gain, for profit, and a vengeance against the Reich that they cannot achieve on their own. And let's not forget that they betrayed us when we were at our weakest point, and set up base in the city instead of continuing to fight to the last man for our cause. Skaloo cannot tolerate such grip now that they are on our border. The invasion to take Gorky will be swift and decisive, and the armored pirates will not be able to resist our powerful armies. They will be defeated with ease. I'm sorry, boys. As soon as March of a Tankist comes out, I'll do you right. As soon as that happens. Euro League is looking thick. Damn, boy! Um. I guess Ferlovsk is winning? I don't fully know. The shield has been broken. Do they want to attack into us? I don't think they do, so let's attack into them. There we go. And we got all their troops in circled in there. Just like that. You hate to see it. You do hate to see it. But, uh, you should not have, uh, submitted. Well, you know, you should have submitted. You should not have resisted. I... You get what you fucking deserve. We live in a society, after all. I'm thinking we, we're gonna want to start editing some of these divisions. So I'll get rid of some of these duplicates. Get artillery put up on these guys. 
Better Barcelona. Nice, not so nice that they kind of fell. Might actually do this real quick. Take a little bit more land as we go along. And these guys are starting to grind down. Yeah, there we go. Gotta really punish them for all they've uh, all their feudal resistance. And then they're going after Samara. And there we go. Now, if I read this bit correctly, if we don't core it now, we will get cores later. Which is interesting, so I'll wait a little bit. I think for now, let's go ahead. Let's get infrastructure as well as industrial investments going. And let's secure control, get a little bit more stability. Because we sure could use it. And from here, let's get the factory back online. Of course, no one can forget about the Gorkovsky Automobilny Zavod, one of the largest vehicle factories in Free Russia that effectively powered the entire war effort of Gorky bandits and producer tanks. Well damaged and out of service now that we invaded, must be repaired and reopened as soon as possible. Its production capabilities, combined with the resources West Russia has to offer, will be very beneficial for the front's military industry. This time, gas will not be put to use for law of Spain, it's formally controlling the city, but for true Russian government in Arkhangelsk. There we go. Pushing pretty... Pretty easily into Samara. Let's go ahead and get the resort star Czar. During the West Russian War, Tsar Vladimir was nothing more than a Russian collaborator, hated by his people and supportive of an almost dead ideology. However, he would do the unthinkable and lead a small army of collaborators and emigres into the Russian lines that both the Wehrmacht and the Front were under pressure. The pocket Vladimir created between the other warlord states grew in power, centered around the city of Rakov. Now we have come back to conquer them, and unlike some other warlords... There cannot and will be no negotiations with them. The freedom of the people and socialism are non-negotiable. This simply is a matter of war, and a matter that will surely end the victory of the Russian people and the front. There we go. Uh, fuck, I don't know who's winning here. It looks more like, uh, yeah, I, I'd say Vyatka's winning, actually. I, it's a bit more clear now. I hate to do this to you, Vlad, but... Ah, uh, shit. Here we go again. Half a century later, Rush finds itself in a situation so different from then, but also so similar. We are on the verge of ending the Tsarist tyranny for a second time, since some members of Romanov dynasty seem to have not learned their lesson. We need to ensure that it never rises ever again in the Russian lands, and so as part of Operation Venus, the monarchist of Yaka will be attacked and crushed forever. They might have accumulated significant power in the lands, but the red tide is approaching them, and they will soon be swept aside from it. The Front is the only rightful government of a nation, not a hereditary autocracy of incompetent rulers.
Actually, it looks like we need a lot more artillery, so we'll get working on that. And we'll put an extra factory towards guns, actually. We're lacking tungsten. Hmm. Bit, bit, get a bit tungsten, very sneaky. A little bit in perm. Not too much, but a little bit. <clears throat> ah, shit. Here we go again, boys. I'll go ahead. Destroy that. You guys move in. Did you guys not get reassigned to the... Well, we took their capital right off the bat. Very nice. Move into perm after that. Man, Strokeman was going pretty well, but it got undone. So be it. Still got a couple of good ones going. Ooh, that's interesting, actually. Um, I want to give him props for trying. The AI actually is uh, not just bending over and uh, letting us take them gently into that night. They're actually doing an okay job, sort of, relatively. But once we take, I think, Kazan? Oh no, actually, they... But we'll let them move out of Kazan first. It looks like they're working on doing so. Actually, they're reinforcing. You avoid doing that then. No, you do that. You hold out there. Shit, they retook fear capital. Well, uh, not for long. Not for long, they will have. And with that, and Kazan, as well as Perm, they are still not capitulated. Fuck! Okay, you hang in there, soldier, the long, as long as you can. Take Arsk. They're not taking Parm back because the AI is. I'm not going to say they're stupid because they're going to hear me and realize that's the right thing to do. Okay, yeah. Okay. Fucking dumbasses. About to fucking troll these guys. Look. Oh fuck, they took their capital back. I don't know what we're doing. Other than about to... Getting close to retaking it. <sighs> Come on, give up. Got give up, Vlad. Just get in the fucking basement so we can make this quick. Please.
There we go. There we fucking go. Next, we'll go ahead and take a gander at the royal relics. The days when the czars ruled Russia have left us, have left them rel left blah, them relics of the past that remind us of the reign, specifically the many crowns and diamonds. While they may seem of little significance to citizens in the front, they can act as symbols that the reactionaries can put to use. And Vladimir did just that when he took over Kobe with his army of supporters and collaborators. Now that the royal regalia are in our hands, it's time to do what has to be done, and hide or destroy them all. They, re they merely remind us of Czar Steers. The last thing we would want is for some reaction to use them to rally support around the monarchist cause once again. Because you know what they say about the third time, after all. And it looks like our final boss is going to be Samara. So it's like kind of a shitty final boss. Hmm. Oh, how? How much of reduction? Twenty per. Okay, that's really first. Anton looked on as they piled the royal relics hide. Crosses, crucifixes, manuscripts encased behind between covers of gold, solid gold, jewelry, and many, many more. Indeed, the Romanovs had amassed quite the wealth since returning to Russia. The pile of treasure reminded Anton of dragons. And now they find the lair of one and slain it. Anton leaned forward and picked up a small notebook, barely the size of his palm. Its cover was leather, smooth, almost soothing to the touch. His fingers flickered through the pages, and Anton realized that the paper was creamy, expensive. No writing graced its empty grasslands of white, no hill, no mountain, no ink painted in its canvas, and no vistas described in its pages. In its hollow form, it was beautiful, complete in its incompleteness. The book enchanted him, and he slipped it into his uniform. No commanding officer would resent him for keeping a book stolen from right under the emperor's true trove of loot. For the rest of the day, Anton helped with the orderly recollection of the treasure. He kept his book close to his chest. After everything was done, he approached his commanding officer. What to do with all this loot, sir? Well, the, uh, high command has been, uh, unclear on that. They, uh, that reduction of consumer goods factory seems very, very nice. Then again, we could kind of use some stab. Hmm. I might go for stab, honestly. They uh they want to maintain the cultural value of these objects possess or something like that. Looking all this, not bad stuff overall, it seems. Now let's get moving on establishing the new frontier. We have more ruler states falling in the front front of our the might of our front once again. We must consolidate our gains. If we are too quick, we will not have learned our lesson from the West Russian War, and the bastion of socialism will collapse as quickly as it rose. Thus, the new lands brought under rule. Our protection must be stabilized, and civilian rule must be established soon. Time and effort will be devoted to this, and everyone must work together to achieve stability and liberation in the new swaths of land we have liberated. Only once that has been done, we will be able to continue our campaign of unification. Here we go. China's to war with the National Protection Army. And we're now out of manpower, officially. But we'll worry about that in time, I think. Do an industrial investment. Let's do it, why not? How is all our 
part in this region. Hungary sided with Italy. Interesting. And so did that give us cores? Uh, looks like fucking no. Hmm. Not so much for that. Let's go ahead and expand vehicle production. Our expansion continues with glory success, and as our territory grows, so does our access to the industry and resources of West Russia. We can utilize this newly found power in many ways, and one of them is the production of vehicles in our factories. Vehicles, whether they are armored personnel carriers or mere trucks, have many uses in both the military and civilian sectors, especially if we produce more modern advanced models. Transportation of people and useful goods across the territories we control will be easier, especially as we prepare and develop the infrastructure destroyed by the German bombings. It will also help us better project our power further south in the areas we have just conquered and are still in periods of transition. Alright, well I guess we gotta get integrating these ourselves. Work on perm. And Gorky. It was a nice idea, but uh, it didn't work out, did it? Tino devs lied to me. Motherfuckers. Fucking poop butt ass. Well, we got that going. Let's go ahead and maybe we look at the government. With the front, when the front collapsed, together with its efforts to defeat the Reich, Marshal Voroshilov and those who had still had faith in him and the regime were forced to flee to the far north, specifically the freezing city of Arkhangelsk. However, now that more of our old lanes have been brought back under our control, there are much more attractive options for the front's capital and base of operation. Specifically, the two major operations considered are Siktivkar, a major city for a bit further south, and Rakov, formerly known as Vyatka, in the center of the Russian Royalist Restorationist. Both have been secured by the Red Army and are much more easily connected to the rest of West Russia than in the fronts we fight on. Additionally, with them both being previous capitals of warlord states, some infrastructure for governing a nation from there will definitely exist. Therefore, relocating the government is a tempting option to support our campaign of unification and help the front in general. That could work. Indonesian War. I like how we evidently just have the right amount of tungsten now. Not too much, not too little, just the right amount. I think next we'll go ahead and work on Korn Vyatka. With the defeat of Tsardom of Vyatka and the Republic of Komi, a question arises amongst the ranks of front. The front's current capital, located in Arkhangelsk, is hardly the most hospitable place. Cold weather, rough terrain, and distance from other urban centers of West Russia rendered it almost obsolete. I can be now considers moving, but to where? Fortunately, with the defeat of our adversaries in the region, we have a few candidates in mind. The first is the city of Siktivkar, the former capital of the front during the West Russian War. A move here would, be, would have deep symbolic value. Beneath it lays the former Republic of Komi's supply of chemical weapons, useful to deter any intruders from entering it. However, city has a long tradition of paramilitarism, it might, not, it might be best not jeopardize the nerve center of our government. Further south is Rikov, or in its czarist terminology, Vyatka, eh. A more centralized location, located near the Siberian Railway and the Advanced Manufacturing Plant, the infrastructure of the area would mean that the supplies would get to our soldiers quicker. The location is an issue, however, if the Germans come, came knocking, they wouldn't have to go too far to knock the front's government down. Lastly, there's the Old Reliable. Arkhangelsk. Located far away from many urban areas of the front, its position has become untenable with the availability of more suitable candidates. However, its isolation and the rough terrain that surrounds it would serve to slow down any enemy that intends to defeat the front. The choice of marshals, where should we go? Let's relocate to Rakov. That's just a smooth fucking pun right there. N not a pun, what would that be? 
I don't know quite exactly what what you call that. Let's go ahead and hunt down the rebel elements. We might have taken full control of many new territories in West Russia, but resistance continues. As much as we've tried to normalize the situation there and discredit regimes that used to rule lands, some still fight on and resist Arkhangelsk's authority. Or should we say Rakob's authority? Such rebellions must be put down, especially when they could present a possible threat for supply lines when they move southwards. For that reason, counterinsurgency operations must be happening at all times. If we don't stop fighting the rebellions and partisans, then we will not have to give them any more space and freedom to operate. Eventually, the resistance will stop. They are demoralized and depleted of men and supplies. Even the most radical resistance groups will have to surrender. There we go. Uh, we have no political power. Oh no, we're starting to get a little bit now, per day. A few of our cores must have finished up. Battle for Italy. We'll see what ends up happening there now. From here. Probably Kazan is a good one to core next. <clears throat> Victor looked at the side of battle. As a member of the Marshal's staff, he was tasked with having data from engagement with the monarchists and revisionist partisans in the countryside. The very notion of resistance surprised him. Weren't the Union beloved a symbol of defiance against the Nazi Germans? Why would the people turn on them now and support the reactionaries and the traitors? He shook his head. Maybe he would never understand. He stood his foot ankle deep in the mud. The rains had made the ground wet, and if he were not careful, he would sink. He looked at the truck that brought him here, its wheels dug into the mud, and no motion of the engines could clasp nature's grasp, unclasp nature's grasp. Before him stood the remnants of a compound of the partisans used as a hiding base place for their insurgent acts. An old settlement from the Soviet times, abandoned during the bombings. He could see the shattered facades of buildings on the streets and shards of brick and wood crushed hunched underneath his foot as he walked by. Weapons, dead bodies. The front had long since cleaned out after its own dead. For those people, however, there was no such luck. Their emperors, gods, ideologies, it didn't matter. They had abandoned them. Left them for dead. He set out his notes and camera, the tools of his trade. It was time to get to work. Screw some work, but it was necessary all the same. I think Tuman is winning? No Sverdlovskis. I don't know who's fucking winning. I don't know. Let's get to Operation Luna. With the completion of Operation Venus, we've defeated even more enemies in West Russia and are likely contenders to once again be to unite this fractured region. However, we still have formidable opponents to deal with before we can safely say that we have become the masters of West Russia like last time. Should we defeat them, perhaps we can claim that role once more. they are the groups that stand in our way. First Bashkir, a nationalist Islamic Republic that will flip Italy ambitions other than survive, will be easy targets. A more unique warlord exists in Perm, or existed, where small insane cult has deemed the Russians Aryans and wants to collaborate with the Germans. However, our biggest enemy in the region, and one of the most hated groups, is Samara and the Russian Liberation Army. Ruled by General Vilso, they have betrayed our, their country and are friends of the Germans. Of course, they will be crushed with all our might. Here we go. Four men march slowly forward in the woods, their feet and hands linked by chains. The bites chinked to the tempo of their steps. Behind them was Victor and a squad of local front soldiers tasked with guarding the lot. These men were partisans of various groups. On their uniforms were patches that declared their allegiance. The VTNS, Comey Republic's assortment of paramilitaries, and others still. It did not matter to whom they belonged. In Victor's mind, they were all traitors, fascists, and revisionists. On a clearing up ahead was a courtroom held for this occasion. The judge, a captain in the front, dressed in a uniform, sat on a metal chair. The front's a military book, law book lay on a table for him. Around him, gathered in a cluster, was appendages, court notaries, sternographers, and a jury made out of random farmers and scavengers the front had accosted to serve jury duty. In a civic court, these partisans may have stood a chance. Once it was in the military's hands, however, no matter how formal the front had arranged for trial to be, the verdict was sealed. Victor felt petty pity for his men, even as he volunteered himself to stand witness and testify against them. 
They were kindred, countrymen. Misguided? Maybe. Guilty? Almost definitely. They couldn't have known, however, that they were on the wrong side of history. Even as the bites chinked and the leaves underfoot crunched under the steady stream of steps, he felt pity. Thus the judge trial proceeded. When it took the stand and the defendants defended himself, to no avail. The owl struck and the judge pronounced the guilt. Victor waits with bated breath for the sentence to be read. Follow empty force rustled. As a pregnant silence reigned in the court. Let's do hard labor. Give a stab back up. And that, boys, I think it's time to cut it. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, leave a like. If not, feel free to dislike. And once we move this kind of feature, hit the sub button. For more uploads every weekday as well as occasionally Saturdays. If you have any comments, feedback, concern, anything of the sort, leave it in the comment section below. I read all the comments I get. I appreciate any other feedback you might have for me. If you want to keep up to, updated with all the uploads, hit the little notification bell. If you want to be really committed and keep up to date, have any, um, if you want to see me do sort of live, I have a Twitch. If you want to send a few bucks more from my Patreon, if you want to uh, chat, play games, do anything sort of, Discord, all of which are in the description box below. That's really it for now, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you as always for watching. My name has been Dogboat333. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.